Hi everyone, it's 314 Reactor here. Today we're looking at a new release of the Unreal Tournament DirectX 11 renderer, which is also for Unreal Gold, Rune, and Deus Ex, as well as a couple of other games. So let's go straight down to the changelog for 1.6. I believe this was released just a few days ago. So now we have added support for Clive Barker's Undying, added support for Harry Potter 2 Chamber of Secrets, effects, projectiles, transparent objects like cone lights are now drawn after ASSAO, so that means these effects should look a lot better in combination with ambient occlusion, as it's here, uh, explosion is no longer white, screen space reflections or ambient occlusion, no darkened effects in rune, ETC, so that should be improved. All water with screen space reflections is now reflective and becomes non-transparent, so in the previous versions we've seen that some water doesn't have or didn't have the reflections in, now it should. Got implementation of triple buffering for VSync True with reduced input lag. That should be pretty handy. Normal maps and height maps for models. I don't know if that's just the implementation or whether they're present. I'll have to see. Corrected for screen space reflections and ambient occlusion in the fog. And there's a new option test default factor and remove test late only in CFG. So now you can assign a small tessellation amount to any mesh model not covered in the CFG file. You can manually configure what models you want to be tessellated, how much you want them to be tessellated in the CFG file. But and now anything not covered in that will now be covered by this default factor. And there's some fixes for Unreal Gold. Drawing shadows with tessellation false is fixed. Correcting drawing of terrain in DM Riot. Improved look of dynamic shadows. Updated tessellation CFG. DSX fixes. Fixed tessellation issues in revision version. Reshade can be used to apply depth buffer effect. Unreal Tournament fixes. Fixed drawing some decals like bullet holes. Ripper Explosion, ETC, Updated Tessellation CFG, and there's some Harry Potter 1 fixes, fixed tessellation issues, and there's some Klingon Honor Guard fixes, which fixes a crash when accessing video ops. That's some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to dive in. What I'm mainly going to look at is to see if there are any signs of normal maps or height maps on models, and to just see how the water looks as well. So that it also says there's much better performance in Gnarly Weapons 3 with the Ultra Gore, so we'll give that a check as well because there has been some performance issues I've noticed with that when running gnarly weapons. So let's go to the installation. Alrighty, so here we are, the installation procedures. You want to open up the main file itself, uh, go into common, drag and drop D3, D11, DRV, the int file and the DLL file over into your Unreal Tournament system folder. Overwrite anything that's in there. And then what you also want to do is go up a level, go into Unreal Tournament 436, and then drag across the DLL and the CFG file in there. Again, overwrite anything in there. And then also you want to make sure you download the Unreal normal height maps for DirectX 11, which are here. And you just drag over the textures folder into the root folder of Unreal Tournament. And then again, overwrite anything that's in there. All links to this will be in the description. Once this is installed, you should be good to go. So let's dive right in and have a look at some of the changes. And also, also under preferences, there's the new settings. So under here, you can see the new tessellation default factor. So yeah, you can set it to be 30% uh, in there. So anything that's not in the CFG file will get a default of 30% tessellation. Uh, I don't think there's anything else newly added in here. So that pretty much covers off that. All right, so the first level I'm going to check out is Assault Frigate because I know that has water internally that didn't previously have reflections applied to it. So you've got the water out here, reflections applied to it, and then when you go indoors in the underside, this water under here didn't previously have reflections in it. And now it does. You can see that nicely uh, normal mapped with uh, screen space reflections over it. Really, really tasty stuff. So that is now reflecting nicely and it's now no longer transparent. I think that was a sacrifice that had to be made in order to get the reflections working. I think it looks a lot better. Really happy with that. That looks pretty awesome. So, firing up. Let's give ourselves all weapons. So, from what I've seen, it doesn't appear that there is any normal mapping being applied to the models here which makes sense because there was no extra file provided with any new textures or anything I think what it means is that in the 1.6 renderer it has the ability to have normal maps on the models and height maps on the models so I think there may be some work in the future where we can have normal maps possibly even parallax occlusion mapping on models 
like weapons and player characters and stuff like that. So that would be cool. Hopefully that's something that could be implemented in the future. Again, we have the little trough of water here reflecting quite nicely. So that's nice. So now all water in the game is reflective. That's really good. So I can think of another level that has water inside and that would be DM Turbine. Let's give that a look. Alrighty. So we'll be down here. Uh, so that water doesn't appear to have been affected. That could be a different effect from the normal water we see. See if we can get down closer to it, actually. Yeah, so that. I think that may be a different effect from the standard water. Let's check out water somewhere else in this level. So that appears to be the same type of water. Not affected. Oh, there we go. So the water here. Okay, so that water does have reflections in it. You can see the wall there. Okay, so ah, it could just be the angle of the water. Um... Because if you're looking down on it like that, obviously the walls aren't really on the screen and the right angle to be reflected. So that could be what's going on. Let's go back and have a look. Yeah. So this water here is not reflected. Doesn't have uh, SSR or normal mapping applied to it and it's still transparent. Interesting. Same with the water here. That's transparent and not reflecting. And... Yeah, the water here. Oh, no, the water here does reflect. You can see it. Yep. Interesting. So it could just be the effect that's being used on the grate here. I'm not sure why that's the only water that's not affected. It's not a big deal, though. Could just be a different type of texture or effect, as I say. But the rest all does reflect and looks really cool, like this stuff here. Very nice. And then, of course, you've got the additional reflections in the wall there from the water itself. Very nice. And here we are in Codex again. Similar sort of water. Nice reflections in there. Really good stuff. And also, what I've noticed is the lava in here now has uh, SSR and normal mapping on it, which I don't believe it did before. I don't remember it having that before. So that's really cool. And that means we need to check one very, very important thing. Oh, how nice does that look? Oh, that's really nice. But there's one thing we now really need to check, and that's Lava Giant, to see if the lava there has um, normal mapping and screen space reflection applied to it. So here we go, Lava Giant. Uh, it doesn't appear to, at least not the lava out here. Again, that could be because it's a skybox and it might not be able to be uh, affected in that way, but let's check the lava down here. Yes! Oh, there we go. Now, I could be remembering wrong, but I don't think this lava had that effect on it before, and now it does. That's really nice. It could just be that I didn't notice before. In fact, I'm going to downgrade the DirectX 11 version to 1.5 and double check that right now. So let's do that now. Okay, because okay, here we are back in 1.5 DirectX 11. Let's see. Aha! Okay, so the, the lava has had uh, normal maps and reflections in it for a while. I just haven't noticed. I guess it's because of the angle it's usually at, like there. That's cool though. Just need to find a way to get this lava to have it. That'd be cool to see the stars like reflecting and those clouds of uh, vapor or whatever it is reflecting in the lava here, but might not be possible because it's a skybox. Actually, while we're still in the 1.6 version, let's load up some Gnarly Weapons 3 with Ultra Gore and we'll have a look at the frame rate. And then we'll go up to 1.6 and then see if the frame rate has improved. And let's go to face on lava. So there's a baseline flying around. We're running about uh, 97 frames a second there. So this is 1.5 before the optimizations went in. So we'll have to see what the frame rate is like and how it maintains when there's lots and lots of gore going on. So we saw the frame rate go down about 74 frames there. And that was just one person blowing up. Level 5 nuke. So just that person in the distance. Oh yeah, there. 37. Down at 37 frames when that happened. And someone's planted something here. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> I really don't know what that is. So I'm going to fire off this as quickly as possible. And see what happens to the frame rate. The frame rate is 43 frames, 26, 23, 24, so yeah, about <laughs> single digits for a bit there. 
So that went really down uh, in frame rate to like 16 frames and at one point was even at uh, single digits. Oh no. <laughs> so that took the frame rate. That took the frame rate down quite a bit, but not as much. So you can clearly see the uh, gore and explosions really hit the frame rate. And I've got uh, the extra gnarly weapons super settings on, which makes the explosions even more extreme. That's an even better test for it. But we need a bit more of a gore test just before we move on. There's also been fixes to the decals, like bullet holes and stuff. But I've not really seen any issues with those anyway, so I'm not sure if I can test that. So yeah, again, hits the frame rate quite hard. So that, yeah, that took the frame rate down quite a bit. About 70s. And I wasn't even fully looking at it. I've also read that the new 469 update for Unreal Tournament is going to help with a lot of these issues as well. But that's not public yet, as far as I know. So, can't test that yet. Alrighty, so let's try a deathmatch. I'm on Phobos, and I'm... Uh, spectating. If I can just get the free camera. Let's just sit back and watch here. 200% speed. And I just want to see what the frame rate's like as the bots slaughter each other. Oh, yeah. You can see the frame rate dropping to the 50s there. Let's go down this area. Oh, my God. Okay, so... <laughs> so it's down into the 30s. Yeah, I think we've established there that the frame rate is indeed impacted quite a bit in the old version of DirectX 11. So let's go back to the new version. Oh, my God. Of... DirectX 11 1.6 and see if that frame rate is improved. Alright, so here we are back in 1.6. Let's fire up Phobos again. Same settings as before. So the frame rate still seems to be quite heavily impacted. We'll see if it gets down to the 30s because it's sat quite comfortably in the 40s at the moment with all this action going on. We'll see if that dips. Oh, yep, yeah, that did. Okay. I can't see too much of a frame rate difference there, but I think that just may be a limitation of this older patch that I'm still on. So with everything back to normal, let's try back to capture the flag and face on lava. And let's try a few nukes. Oddly, the frame rate appears to be reporting that it's like 30 frames a second here. And that's like 20, but there's not a lot going on. That's interesting. I'm not sure why the frame rate's so low. This could be one of the memory issues that I was talking about. I'm gonna try restarting the game, see if that clears anything out. And yeah, the frame rate's back to normal. Uh, so yeah, there may be some memory issues with the old 451 patch uh, after a match with Ultra Goron. Let's try a nuke and see how badly that impacts the frame rate. So that actually didn't impact the frame rate too much. At least that one didn't. Alright, here we go. 75 frames, 54, 37, 31. Okay, so that's probably about the same as it was before. But again, when people explode, that doesn't appear to be hitting the frame rate as hard. At least not when a single person explodes. Because on 1.5, that seemed to be bringing the frame rate down to like 40, and now it doesn't appear to be. So I think that has somewhat improved things. Yeah, that does seem a bit smoother. I think when lots of people start exploding, you start running into other limitations. What is this thing? This looks like it will bring down the frame rate. So let's give it a test with this. And then we'll have a look what else needs to be tested. Oh boy. So we're at 60. It's already at 68 frames. Oh my god. Oh my god! So that has brought the frame rate down to 10! Whoa! 13 frames a second! That was in single digits for a bit. It didn't crash, that's a good thing. So I think that at the moment we're still under the limitations of the current patch that we're on. Or maybe it's just even an engine limitation. But it does appear that at least individual gibbing, jibbing of people has had its performance improved. 
So I think that's uh, enough of testing that. Let's see what else uh, needs to be had a look at. What other changes have we got? The explosions no longer wipe the ambient occlusion or screen space reflections. That appears to be okay. All water with SSR true is now reflective. Yep, for the most part, with the exception of some on turbine that we've seen. Screen space reflections and ambient occlusion in the fog. That's one thing I'm going to have to have a look at. I'm going to find a foggy level and see if we can test that. So let's fire up some DM Fetid. So that's quite a bit of fog down here. Uh, the ambient occlusion looks fine. Doesn't appear to be any problems with smoke or... Anything messing up the uh, ambient occlusion or anything? That looks pretty good to me. Ripper explosion looks fine. Yeah, there's no issues I can see there with the uh, ambient occlusion and the fog or explosions messing things up. Very nice. Okay, cool. So that's about all I can think of covering. There's some fixes to Unreal Gold that I'm going to check out at some point as well. Overall, yeah, it's a fairly good incremental improvement to the DirectX 11 renderer. As I say, all links are uh, in the description. Please do like and subscribe for future tech and video gaming videos. Please do have a good day. Hope everyone's staying safe, and I'll see you in the next video.